Welcome to Building with Bootstrap 3. I'm Ben, and together we'll be walking through building some responsive websites using Twitter Bootstrap 3. So okay, you've done some HTML5 and CSS work, or maybe you've taken a class. But you also want to be able to springboard into building beautiful website quickly without having to start from a blank white HTML page. That's what Bootstrap is great for. It can shorten the time to build a website, but still gives you a tremendous amount of freedom to use your own design elements that fit your particular need. By the end of this course, you will be able to put together two basic websites, one, a marketing website, and then a more advanced web application UI. We'll be taking it from the very, very beginning, going step by step to accelerating a bit once we get to some of the more advanced topics. Overall, the entire course is about three and a half hours if you were to watch it from beginning to end. In this first lesson, We'll do a quick introduction about what's in the course, talk about the overall course goals. We'll also show a demo of the two websites that we'll be building. We'll be touching upon most of the Bootstrap widget elements, but of course we won't be able to get through everything. So we'll be taking a tour through the Bootstrap documentation so you'll be able to learn and pick up some of those details on your own. In this course, we will be focusing a bit more on the technical aspects and the architecture of Bootstrap 3, but we'll do our best to make the website beautiful as well. Okay, so let's take a look at some of those web pages that we'll be building together. The first of these uses Bootstrap's carousel example to build a fundamental marketing website. In this, you might be selling some particular feature, or you might be selling a product or service, or it might be an informational website that you use for your organization. At the very top, you can see that there's a navigation bar, and then there's this major carousel here that shows some of the major benefits of your organization or company. Underneath, there are some benefit touts, and below that is a featurette slalom that shows even more detail about what makes your offering interesting and unique. And finally, we get to a footer at the bottom. What makes a website responsive is that it senses the size of the window that it's in, and then reformats the content as necessary. You can see here that the carousel and the text inside the carousel shrank as the window size got smaller, and the nav bar contracted into a nav button, which is useful on smaller windows like that on a tablet or on a phone. The benefit touts underneath here also went from a single wide row into three benefit touts stacked on top of each other in a single column and you can see what happened to the featurettes underneath. The second page of the website that we'll be building here shows the product in a little bit more detail. And we go through some other widgets that are in the Bootstrap library, from breadcrumbs to collapsible items, to building simple tables, and showing what you can do using things like social media. The third page of the website is a product detail. Here we start addressing things like forms and panels that can also help show some smaller bits of content, again, helping things to be consumable for your audience. We use collapsible sections again here in order to provide more detail as necessary without overwhelming the user. With scroll spy at the bottom here, we can track using the nav bar a secondary scroll window. For the latter part of the course, we go into building a web application user interface. You can see here it also has a nav bar, a left hand nav, and also alerts using tooltips. The notifications here may bring attention to actions that the users are required to complete. We also go through tabs to help further narrow the view that a user might be interested in. And we'll also touch upon things like modal dialog boxes. So in the first chapter, which should take about half an hour to complete, we'll be getting the basic documents started and building that demo application, getting it up and running, talking a little about the underlying structure of Bootstrap and its overall grid that underlies the layout. In the second chapter, which should take about an hour and a half to complete, we'll be diving into that marketing website. And here is where we'll begin covering some of the static aspects of the main homepage, and then some of the more dynamic aspects of the homepage. Then we'll be going to the product and detail pages subsequently, fleshing out more of the bootstrap widgets. By the end of this, you should be able to have a pretty good idea 
of what it takes to build a beautiful website using Bootstrap. We'll be covering some of the customizations that are available without having to go into things like JavaScript. And we'll also be pushing it to production and talking a little bit about how to debug the application if you hit problems in your development. In the third chapter, which should take less than half an hour to complete, we'll be going into more detail about the dynamic web application UI and talk about some of the capabilities that we use to go and build the notifications and error pop-ups, and also talk about some of the things that we use to make the information more consumable for the end user. In the last chapter, which should take about an hour to complete, we'll be recompiling Bootstrap from source, creating a custom theme, and using dynamic application servers to compile the less CSS preprocessor files on demand. We'll deploy to a platform as a service on the web. And we'll also talk a little bit about testing using a third-party service. And of course, we'll close with a little summary. This is an overall course map using the Bootstrap documentation as the framework. The three main sections of Bootstrap are broken down by CSS, what they call components, and JavaScript. The numbers here represent the course number where we'll be touching upon that aspect of Bootstrap. So, for example, we'll be covering button groups here in section two. The technical requirements, of course, you need a modern browser like Google Chrome, Mozilla, Safari, or IE. You'll need a good text editor. By good, I mean one that helps you with the syntax of the language, whether it's HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. And of course, a mobile or tablet browser is useful for seeing your results on that size of a window. If you're following along, you will need internet access for things like jQuery and for downloading packages. Things that you should know before you start this course are at least a basic understanding of HTML and CSS. It's also helpful to know some JavaScript, and of course, knowing some of the web basics like HTTP and what a web application looks like, or maybe CDNs, is very helpful as well. But not to worry if this is all new to you. We'll be covering some of the basics of HTML5 and CSS in this first course so that we're all on the same page, and we'll be starting nice and slow so that it's easy to follow along. Look forward to seeing you in the course.